What's up guys, welcome to Life of Bliss. Today, we are building speakers. A few months back, I received all new speakers and crossover components from a company called DIY Sound Group. They sell all kinds of different kits ranging from small bookshelf speakers to the larger ones that you see here. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the build process for all of these speakers here, including the Volt 10 version 2s and the aggressive 1299 left center and right channel speakers. We'll go ahead and get started with the Volt 10s first. The first step was to make all the cuts for both boxes. I'll leave a link in the description below for the cuts that I used, but keep in mind that these were built specifically for my room, so these may not work for your particular situation. The boxes for the Volt 10s will be roughly one cubic foot and will include a 10 inch woofer and compression driver in a coaxial design. After making most of the cuts, I mocked up the boxes to get the angles I needed to cut for attaching the front baffle. To do this, I set the baffle on the front and bottom pieces at the correct angle and made marks where I needed to cut. To make sure I had the correct angle on my table saw, I used an electronic angle finder to find the angles and set the blade on my saw. After the cuts were made, everything was mocked up once again to check for fitment before final assembly. To speed up assembly, I glued all edges then tacked the boards together with an 18 gauge nail gun. This allowed me to quickly move from piece to piece to get the boxes together. The large back piece was placed directly on the flat table saw surface while the other pieces were set on a piece of MDF while assembling. This gave the proper spacing for the side pieces to be added later. With only the sides left to attach, I was able to trace the box for the side cuts and cut them slightly larger than needed. This allowed me to come back with a flush trim bit on my router and make a flush cut against the other boards. By the way, this MDF dust is nasty stuff, so be sure to wear a respirator or dust mask whenever cutting it. So with the surrounds out of the way, it's time to move on to the front stage. This is the horizontal center baffle that will be staying the same there and the left and right speakers will be standing upright like this. Uh, now actually this is where the tweeters are going to be going. I'd like it to be higher to be more ear level for my seats. Um, so I'm going to be taking this top 12 inch woofer, relocating it down to the bottom and that way it will raise that tweeter up quite a bit. I'm also going to be making it ported as well while I redo that so I'll go over the process of that now. Here's a quick sketch of what the tower should look like when I'm done, and I'll leave a cut list for everything in the description below. The first step was to mark off the center between the woofer and waveguide opening. This cut was extremely tight, so accuracy was very important in this step. As you can see, there is only a fraction of an inch left above the waveguide for attaching the top plate later on. To attach the woofer opening to the bottom, I simply glued the edges, clamped everything together, and waited for it to dry. It was important that everything was level at this stage, so I used a scrap piece of MDF to set the baffles on for a flat level surface. Before everything set up, I used a straight edge to verify everything was flat and to make adjustments as needed. As you can see here, I taped down some paper underneath the area being glued so it didn't get stuck to the MDF that it was sitting on. And here is everything after the glue dried and the paper removed. Next, I needed to extend the bottom of the front baffle to increase the overall height of the boxes and to make room for the port to be added later. As you will see, I added roughly an inch more than was needed so I could come back and flush trim the bottom once the box was assembled. I used the same method as before, just gluing all the edges, clamping them tight, and waiting for everything to dry. With the front baffles rearranged, it was time to cut out all the other pieces for the boxes. This also included two braces for each box. To give the box proper airflow, yet still have rigid bracing, I ended up making window pane style braces. I marked each edge and center one and a quarter inches thick and cut out the centers.
Before assembly, I also wanted to add the Nutrike Speakon connectors I would be using. To flush mount these on the surface, I used a 2 inch Forstner bit to recess the connector and a 1 inch auger bit to create the opening. After making a few test cuts to get the correct depth, I marked the Forstner bit and used my drill press to make the cuts. I had to get a little creative with the tower speakers to get them level, but I got it to work. And here's a little pro tip for you guys. It's much easier to plan out where the connectors will go before assembling and using a drill press to cut out the holes. The last step before assembling the center channel was to find a spot for the crossover and attach spacers to suspend it. I glued and nailed a few small pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood that would give the underside of the crossover plenty of clearance. Since the volts were already assembled, I found it easier to secure the spacers to the crossover, then glue them into place and let it dry. Continuing with prepping for assembly, I took the port board for the towers and rounded over the edge that will be inside the box to allow for smoother airflow. So at this point it's time to start assembling everything. I'm going to be mocking everything up just like before to make sure all my gaps are small and everything's fitting up properly. And as I'm putting things together, I'm also going to be putting some of this thermofiber mineral wool on the inside of the cabinet to help with damping. So what that will do is reduce the amount of sound waves that are bouncing around inside the cabinet and possibly hitting the backside of the cone of the speaker. Uh, which would cause some muddy sounds and distortion, things like that. So you'll see me throw this in there as I'm assembling everything. From here, it's simply gluing all the edges and brad nailing the boards together. You want to use plenty of glue in the stage as it not only creates a strong bond between the boards, but also seals all the edges. It's also important to use plenty of clamps to compress the boards together before nailing to get the smallest gaps possible. Before completely enclosing the walls, I marked the correct positioning and added the internal bracing. The thermofiber mineral wool is roughly 3 inches thick and will attach to the outer walls of the box with some spray adhesive. This stuff is super itchy, so be sure to wear some gloves while working with it. It does have a smell right out of the packaging as well, so a respirator is never a bad idea either. To allow enough room for the drivers, I did have to cut away some of the material, but here is a look at the inside after all the insulation is in place. Finally, the front baffle was glued and nailed into place. Next, it was time for the towers. Before assembling, I added a few supports to align the port. I also went over the entire port area with some black Rust-Oleum primer and paint combo since it was easier to black things out prior to assembling. With this ported design, the boxes were tuned to roughly 35 hertz. Again, I'll leave the cut list in the description below. After everything dried, I was able to slide the port into place and secure it with nails while the glue dried. When attaching the front baffle, it was important to use several small clamps to align the small lip of the waveguide to the top plate. This will ensure a proper seal and will reduce the gap and amount of finishing work needed later. And here's another pro tip for you guys. Don't forget to add the insulation before installing the front baffle. 
Unfortunately, the huge 12 inch openings allowed for a pretty simple fix. After assembled, I was able to add the crossover and spacers to the top of the port and let the glue dry. Here is a quick shot of the Volt Tens after adding the mineral wool as well. Now it was time to flush trim the bottom edge and cut out the ports. I carefully drilled out a hole for router access and used the flush trim bit to open them up. To smooth out airflow, I took a 3 8 inch round over bit and routed the port opening. For a better cosmetic look, I also did the same for the vertical edges on all of the speakers. So as I was saying earlier, the Volt 10s are built at different angles just based on where they will be on the wall compared to the listening area. This one's going to be a little bit closer, so it's got a steeper angle to be uh, angled downward. It will actually be up on the wall like this, angled down. So this one's going to be a little bit steeper than this one here, which will be a little bit further away from the listening area. So now that the boxes are built, my next step is to come back and fill in any nail holes, any cracks, go over the edges to make sure they're all smooth, and get them ready for painting. I'll definitely be bringing you a video on the prep and paint process once all that is done, as well as a final assembly and some sound demos. Well, that does it for this video, guys. I hope this gave you some good ideas and tips for any new builds that you have coming up in the future. If you have any questions on anything, leave a comment below and I will help you out as best I can. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you're into home theater, DIY projects, or just want to see how these turn out, be sure to subscribe to the channel to see more videos. Also, I know some of you have been wondering what subwoofer I'm going to be pairing with all these, as well as what that crazy 18,000 watt amplifier was for. Well, I'm looking at it right now. It just came in the mail yesterday. I've got an unboxing video coming your way soon, so check back for that. Thanks for watching Life of Bliss, and I will see you soon.